Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are and what time you're watching this. But we're just really excited that you're here today to watch this with us. Uh, we are hopeful that today, over the next few minutes, however much time we have together, that we can maybe bring a little bit of hope and some new ideas about re-engagement and encouragement and ways that we can love on each other as a church body for the rest of this year and as we head into the new year, which I know many of us are very excited to see the clock strike midnight in 2021 to come. <laughs> but we're going to be wildly disappointed when January 1st of 2021 comes. Well, and let's be optimistic. <laughs> nah, I'm a Well, at least we're kind of, we know where we are. Exactly. It's you true, know? It's true, it's true, it's true. And for those of you watching this, it's Wednesday when we're recording this, and we have received texts and calls and all the things because... What are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> what, are we doing? what are we doing? I don't know. I know. I don't know. Um, another lockdown is imminent, <laughs> and... <laughs> it's a great word. I'm really proud of myself. <laughs> it sounds so... Uh, dum, dum, dum. <laughs> <laughs> like it should be an alarm. Should be going, I know. <laughs> but it is. And we know for some of you watching, that is a scary thought. For some of you, it's frustrating. For some of you, it could cause financial burdens. Um, there's so many feelings and emotions that go with that. We are doing the same things ourselves. Like Jobs are doing it. Like It's... It's crazy, and it has been crazy, and it's been a lot. And so if you are watching, and it has just been a lot, know that you are in good company, because it has mm. been a lot for us too. And I'm sure it's been a lot for some of you in ways that I can't even comprehend. Mm. So just know that our hearts want to feel that with you, and try to understand that the best that we can, but also maybe bring a little bit of hope into how we love on and encourage and re-engage each other moving forward to be the best us that we can possibly be. Hmm. Oh, period. I don't want to keep saying anything else. That was really good. Thanks. So the, I think I'll, so I'll start from the, I'll start from the end and we'll, I'll start there and then we'll, we'll go back. We'll end up back there. So start at the end and we'll end back at the end. <laughs> So I want to. I want. I hope. I hope when this is done, that that Jess and I can sort of just talk vulnerably and honestly about what we hope our church looks like. You know, as we move into the new year. And and the, so so the the end of where we'll talk when when this virtual service is done is how we want to get into 2021 together, right? So 2021, we're going to launch a new series called Restarted, and it's anchored in this Zig Ziglar quote. It's actually on our wall um, um, in our hallway. It says, uh, we can't start over, but we can begin now and start a new ending. And what I love about that is that right now where we are, like literally, like what's crazy is like right now when you're watching this, this is like the chance to start a new, to write a new beginning, right? So not, we can't start over. 2020 is what it is. And, and here's what's crazy. Like starting over or, or, or writing a new ending includes where we've been, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so... I want to end talking about 2021 and starting from here and 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 believing that God's going to do something really cool through us and how we end and that the choices that we make from here affect the way we end. But we have a story before this, right? Before March of 2020 hit, we had a story together. We have a history together. Um, my family and I, we've been here, it'll be seven years now, Super Bowl Sunday, seven stinking years. That's crazy. Yeah. And so you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> they said thank you to you and like, oh, can you take no, him? I no, I just think so. <laughs> no. But the reason I said that is like, so with what worship's going to look like this particular um, weekend is I want to pull. I wanted to pull some videos. So Jess and I have gone through social media because some of you guys have like posted that you've been in in worship and these are just cell phone videos of like of worship services. And it's are, there will be a day again when we'll. I'll get to plug in a guitar that's actually electrified with an electric guitar and distortion <laughs> pedals, and we'll sing songs, and it'll be loud, and some of you will wear earplugs, and some of you will throw rock fists, and all that stuff. But we did that together, and it was great, and we'll do that again. So I want to start like with worship that takes a look back to where we've been, because there are some really, really cool things in our story. Mm -hmm. So starting from now doesn't mean dismissing the past. It means taking in the past, the good, the bad, the hard, the easy, and doing that together so that we can end in a place where we're just all celebrating the ending. So here's some songs from some worship in our uh, worship center together from 
been in the last seven years, here's a handful of songs that we, we've done together. So worship with us again.
Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching this. This is the part of our service where we stop every single week to be intentional and remind ourselves about two things. The first one is communion. We take the cracker or the bread or the donut, whatever it is, to remind ourselves intentionally about that body that Jesus gave as a sacrifice on that cross. And we drink some juice or some wine with that to remind us of the blood that he shed on that cross for our sins and what that really means in our life and how we can be thankful for that. The second thing that we be intentional during this time of our service every single week is about our giving. Uh, This is an important time every year where we can be generous to our community, generous to our church, keep the lights on, keep things going so we can continue to do ministry. And you are a vital part of that. So thank you so much for giving and taking this time to intentionally remember and think about how you can be a part of that and what God is doing here at Impact through your financial giving. So thank you for that. Uh, Let me say a quick prayer and then we'll move on with our service. God, thank you so much again for this time where we can just stop and be intentional. Stop and be intentional to think about you and to remember about you and uh, what you have done for us and the sacrifices you have given for us and the blessings that you have in our lives, God, that we can ultimately take those blessings and give back, give back to you, give back to our community, give back to our church, God. So thank you so much for this time where we can just be intentional about it. It's so easy to just go on with our lives and to just do what we want to do or to just get caught up in the hustle bustle or the craziness of life, God. So I'm thankful for this time where we can intentionally stop and focus our eyes on you. We love you and we praise you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
me at all or maybe even a little bit. Uh, I tend to do quite a bit of speaking for my job. I'm a trainer and I usually like to have a ton of notes <laughs> and an outline, maybe a PowerPoint presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, and Dustin and I were kind of, actually you have way more notes than I do for like, when did we change? <laughs> well, the thing is, I can't read it. But they're there. <laughs> um, and I think we just really wanted to be able to share our hearts with you. I think, mm -hmm. um, you know, just this year in general, even without COVID, man, I've talked to so many of you and even our family, it's just been so much, even without a pandemic. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> and I think we would love for you to hear our hearts for you and hopefully maybe you would even agree with us in our hearts for each other. Dustin, uh, kind of in the opening, had alluded to, we have to look at our past and what we've done before. And truthfully, I, I really think this year, if we let it, can make us so appreciate next year. Mm. Um, it, it's not, January 1 is not gonna start and everything's poof gonna be gone, we know that. Um, I think we've settled into a little bit more of the craziness of 2020. But I, I think there that we as, as a church and just as a community of people who want to love each other well, it can almost be um, a place for us to start that we start to appreciate maybe the, the silver linings and what has happened in our lives this year and what will continue to happen next year, um, that we can just really find a place where we love each other mm. well and deeply and encourage each other beautifully because it's just what our hearts want one another I said to our um, staff on a staff call yesterday actually um, this is like so this is kind of like a place to start from that I think you'll um, as we talk through later on a little bit of the a couple of the things that that I, so here's here's what I know what we have to build right now is got to be organic and grassroots programs and structures that can't work you know I think 
I think we spent so much of 2020 as a staff, like holding out for everything to change, you know? So, and then there's this like, there's this, as you can imagine, it's like, there's like, we, you build something and well, that changed. You know, it's like this, it's like, it's like the excitement and disappointment. We can do this. Okay, no, we can't. Oh, we can do this. Like I just, as of an hour ago, had to email our staff that we are not having our staff Christmas party because the venue we were going to do that closed down because of anything. And it's been this rhythm of like, yes, okay, oh, oh. And I think what's happened is that we might have just been trying to build something that we could invite you back into that we've ended up not really building anything because everything continues to get closed down. So I said to our staff yesterday that, that I think that what God is inviting us to do as a staff is over the next coming months, find creative ways to just stink and love on our church. Like we are a very, very volunteer driven church. Mm -hmm. Like I come from, we come from a big church in Ohio, right? That's the last place we worked at. And if we needed somebody to like leaf blow the 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 parking lot, we'd put it on churchstaffing.com and we'd pay them 60 grand to come do it. You know? That much? <laughs> no, I know, I know. Yeah, but, uh, but, but, but the reality of it is, I love the culture at Impact because the culture where I come from is so staff driven. You do it because you get a paycheck. But we are a volunteer driven church. We can't accomplish anything without our volunteers. And I said to our staff, I think, I think, I think that this is a season for us to just figure out how do we love our, our church? Because we'll eventually rebuild, right? We'll eventually put those things back in place. But for right now, how do we just take the time before we work on infrastructure and rallying volunteers just to say we want to be um and we want to figure out ways to, to tell you that we care a lot you know and that we love you and that we want to be a part of this the story with you so good and maybe what if the purpose of all of this is to have a chance to start from the you know square one yeah right no and joke. to start as a church that just loves each other yeah that just encourages one another that that just cares that just is present that, that thinks about each other more than we think about ourselves. Like what if the beauty of this was at a base level, we're restarting to really be who we have always wanted to be, but we got clouded yeah. by services and preparation and organization, yeah. which I love all that stuff. That like, that kind of makes me happy. <laughs> but maybe- I just, I just, I'm twitching. Organization. <laughs> <laughs> but, but maybe this is to really help us create a culture that matters more than the program. Well, I said, like I, I that was really good. That was amazing. Like, can we just real quick? Can we just <laughs> does everyone know? No, you too. You too. Um, can, can we just can we just celebrate Jess real quick? Oh, and then stop. okay, anyways. Uh, but I, I I mentioned this to somebody. I don't even remember. I, it might have been my buddy Kevin. Kevin's been sort of like just like such a such a godsend to our church and to me mm-hmm. personally. And I think it was Kevin that I said um, I was praying about what we do, you know, and what we do as a church and. And I'll be honest with you, like, I, I felt this so strongly in my spirit that it's going to sound like it stung when I heard it from the Holy Spirit. But let me, first I'll say it and I'll tell you how it actually landed, right? So I remember I'm praying and the Holy Spirit sort of responded to me and said like, yo, Dustin, because he talks my language. He was like, yo, my dude. He's like, if you only do ministry in the ways you've always done it, if that's how you're committed to doing ministry. And, I, and I've done it now for 25 years. Since I was 15 years old, I've worked in the church. Mm-hmm. And so for 25 years, I've I've kind of done a very similar thing in different contexts. And the Holy Spirit said to me, if you hold out, and if you just continue to do ministry the way you've always done it, this is what he said, you might find yourself doing no meaning, meaningful ministry at all. And I was just like, I, I took my breath away to hear that. But here's, so it, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like a, hey, get your act together, right? It was actually like this exciting, like just said, you can rethink this. Like you, you can actually reimagine what ministry looks like because if you only do it the way you've been doing it for 25 years, you might look in the mirror and be like, wow, I've not accomplished anything meaningful now for quite a while. So maybe all of this is about doing new, which is going to be meaningful. And if we just hold fast to what we've always done, what if we accidentally find ourselves not really mm-hmm. doing or accomplishing much of anything? Mm-hmm. So one of the things that we did, oh, one of the things that I, this morning, this will be fun. This could be, this could be scary. You might watch a fist fight here, right? Um, but I, I asked Jess, I, I woke up this morning, I was jotting down these notes this morning and, and I thought of this thing and I was going to put it at the end and Jess said we should do it up front. And so, okay. So I, I asked Jess, jot down three words that you hope describes our church when we're this time next year. And I said, don't tell me about it. I won't tell you about it. I want to do it 
it's like with you mm -hmm. here. So we each have three words. Um, so I did three words and then lots of print. And then I did lots of words in a parentheses. So no, it's that's not fair. <laughs> Fire me. <laughs> um, so okay, so let's do this. So did um, you write down words? Because you said we had to write them down. I did. They're on my phone. Oh, I like made cards. Cards? Oh yeah, I like wrote it pretty. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Pause. The difference. Yeah, me I know. Right? Okay. okay, so you go first. Okay. Go. We, we might have similar words. Yeah. Actually, but okay, let me say this. 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 So, <laughs> so I really want to say this. Okay. So I chose to not do the words that are, are like you might have these words, and if you do, they're still good words. But I like loving. Even I almost obviously I almost wrote down authentic. You know, that's that's a word. I chose to not do words that I wanted to do words that were like, hmm, wow, that's an interesting word, and I, that I almost had to explain why I'm in it. So obviously we want to be Christ-centered. Obviously we want to be loving. Obviously we want to be all those things. So so I wanted to choose words that's like, wow, that's an interesting. That's gonna to to be that. It's gonna have to be strategic because that's not as natural. Mm. So that's how I. I'm really it. glad I didn't choose any of the words that you just said because I'd have been like, yeah. wah, wah. loving. Yeah. <laughs> Christ center. Wah, wah, wah. Okay, here we go. So you first. Go first? Oh, well, go for it. Okay. Do I have to like hold it up? I mean, I I can't see it. I mean, I I don't have that. Yeah, why don't you? You just. Oh my gosh. I mean, I really wrote them nice too. Okay, go. What is it? Belonging. Oof. Okay. So the reason I did belonging is. We have some amazing friends. We have amazing California family. We have amazing people around us, but this has been a really isolating, lonely mm. year. Yeah, for sure. And it's weird. I've never wanted to like belong more than I do right now. Like a sense of community and a sense of a group mm. and a sense of you matter and, and, and they matter and we matter and just a real sense of belonging that, and I think this year has been so divisive. I hate mass. I love mass. I think this mm. is real. I don't think it's real. I'm losing my job. I still have my job. And, and a, an election. Election. And and we've, we've, we've found ways to almost, the pandemic itself has distanced us, and then we have distanced ourselves. Mm. And man, I want us to be a church where people feel like they belong. That when they walk in, it doesn't matter. Or, but 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 mm -hmm. but not to correct you, but to correct you, what we can't walk in. So we have to yeah. learn to belong. Yeah. yeah. We have to like create opportunities to say mm -hmm. like. So we might have to go to somebody's house and leave a card on the front door that says, "By the way, I love you. I miss you. Yeah. Thinking about you. You know what I mean?" So that we say to, we say, mm -hmm. "I want to belong with you, even though I can't see you or I can't hug you. I want to be yeah. where you are." Yeah. Emotionally, I want to be where you are. Relationally, I want to be where you are. You know. And if we do that now, imagine what it'll yeah. be like when we can meet. Yeah, right. We'll feel right. like so belonging. You know, yeah, yeah, like we'll yeah, be yeah, so yeah. ready to be together. Okay, so that's a good one. Mm -hmm. So I said, be <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I said vulnerable. Oh. Yeah, I want to be a church that's vulnerable, and I think. And here's here, here and I, here's the words that I wrote down that could kind of kind of go with that. Meaning wall, like here's what I think of when I think of vulnerable. Like our walls are down, and when we take our walls down, and I mean this both um, both sort of personally, and then even organizationally, if, when you're vulnerable, it's like you're saying that like like when I drop my walls, I know it could hurt, I know it could be scary, I know it could be, I know it could cost me something, mm -hmm. and also when you take your walls down, it lets somebody else get to where that you are. And so in the context of the church, we, uh, we, we have a, a tendency to, it's kind of, this is who we are. And, and we actually have this, if you're not like this, then you, you sort of, you threaten who we are. And what if we as a church were willing to say, you know, we, who we are is an invitation for you to belong. And we'll, we're willing to drop down our walls so that you can feel like that you can belong here with this. And so uh, our wrong? words go together. You said belong okay. like three times. I did. I did. Okay, okay. Okay. So, so anyways, vulnerable, meaning walls down, authentic, inclusive. And then I said aware that... That's a lot of words. <clears throat> well, no, I know, I know, I know. But it's all, in, it's all under the umbrella, the umbrella of vulnerable. Walls down, authentic, inclusive, aware that it might be hard. And then I think vulnerable, I think this is a, a synonym, that, though not a synonym, they're hand in hand, is brave. I think vulnerability is very brave. Mm -hmm. Because vulnerability says this could suck, but... 
I'm willing to give it a shot. Mm -hmm. So I want us to be a church that's known by being very vulnerable. Okay. Okay, next. I was prepared for this. No, no, I am so... Mm. Faithful. Okay, okay, okay. And that is kind of a cliche mm. one. Yeah, I mean, you're going to need to give me some more because... Okay, okay. So normally we think of faithful when we think of giving, you know, or when we think of... And I do want us to be a church that is giving and, and wants to give. Um, but, you know, I really... The things you're going to talk about, some of the ideas that you've had and the staff has had about how to really cultivate... Um, loving on each other when there's when we can't be in a building yeah, and yeah. caring for one another and encouraging one another and um, really being there for one another even in ways that <laughs> don't even seem like they're real because we yeah. can't always be there in ways that we want to. And I, man, I just want us to be faithful in the small things right now. The ways that mm. we can be there for each other. The ways that we can love on our community, the ways that we can love on our brothers and sisters in Christ, the way that ways that we can love on the hurting in our neighborhood, the mm. ways that we can just love and be there. And I think sometimes being faithful is hard because mm -hmm. we might get an idea and it sounds great. I mean, how many people were going to work out during COVID, you know, like, and then it's like, <laughs> right. Yeah. But like how many, you know, there were so many things we were going to do, but sometimes ideas, they come and yeah. then they go as quickly as they come. And I just want us to be known as a group of people that are faithful constant. To, and constant. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And continuing on when someone really enjoys your encouragement and maybe when they never mention it or when someone really mm. just is so thankful for what you've done and they almost make you feel bad for it. Like to just be faithful in what we can do to engage one another and encourage one another. That's really good. I was thinking about a podcast that I heard today, but I won't get into it except to say the hashtag culture, meaning like the posting mention it, even mm -hmm. if someone doesn't mention it. I think it's been, it's weird because it's been, it makes, it makes what we do, the importance of it seems to hinge on who notices it mm. because it's kind of the culture. Mm -hmm. But yet the, the heart of Jesus was, like you said, no matter what, yeah. that what we do, and it's the whole, like, if you, if you only do it for the, for the post, you know, Jesus said, when you've got your reward, right? So it's doing it for a deeper meaning. That's mm -hmm. just to be that, just to be constant and faithful. So that's really mm -hmm. good. I like that. Um, my second word is um, <laughs> <laughs> is necessary. Mm. I want the church, our church, to be necessary to our city, to our families. Um, like I think, I think that uh, here, here's the reality of it. That like what COVID and the whole quarantine thing did is it it made the building negotiable right like mm -hmm. so we don't have i mean we're paying for a building we still paying the smud bill mm -hmm. but like the building itself is negotiable so if we're not careful if we're just about the building and that's what we're primarily the kind of who, what we do then 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 we run the risk of being you know a cool idea on the list of things that we might get into this week but I want the church to be necessary, and it again it probably goes into faithful, like mm -hmm. because we're we're constantly we're constantly looking for ways to be involved in our community and our family, so that way it's not it's not a matter of hey do you want to go to church this week or hey do we want to go to this event to go to this like the church is necessary and it might not be about the programs it might be about when something happens and you and you need community. That boom, the church is necessary, and that's you know, there's, there's these constant reminders that, that when you, when we get to the when we get this time in 2021, I hope that the church is less. What's the word? If it's negotiable, but also I don't know. There's a word when it's like take or leave it. You know? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not that it's bad. It's, it's a good idea, but mm -hmm. so but instead, I'd rather the church be necessary. Like man, I need yeah. I need this yeah. in my family's life. I, I wrote down the words to see. Yeah, it makes a difference. Relevant. Uh, I wrote down a faithful friend. What if the church was known as a faithful friend? Oh, babe. Babe. <laughs> we, cheated. We, did, we, we actually did all this. This we is a, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> okay, number three, number three, number three. Okay, I'm going to pull you. I'm going to add more words under this one. You wrote on the back of this one. I did. Okay. Beacon. Beacon. Uh, this is the like, definition of a Beacon. Okay. Person or thing that warns, guides, or offers support and hope. Wow. And so, so this is what I'm going to add on to it. Okay. When I think of beacon, I think of a beacon of love, a beacon of hope, and a beacon of light. 
And I think of the Batman symbol. Hey, that too. Okay, I'm just saying. Protect. <laughs> For those of you that are hungry watching this Sunday morning, it also sounds like bacon, so you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was thinking more so Beacon, and I really thought of it because right now the building can't necessarily be that, and not everyone that we know will has a reason to drive by the building right now. If no one's going in, there's not necessarily a reason for people to be driving by. And I thought, wouldn't it be so amazing if we were Beacons on our walks? Uh, in our neighborhoods, mm. while sitting on our front porches, or in you know, in our driveways, <laughs> while if we can still go to work while going to work, what if we really truly became the light and the hope and the source of support mm. as good. little beacons ourselves, being the church before we can actually go into a building that can be that place as well. That's really one. That's a good one. My last word is unified. Hmm. Just a sense of one. You know, I think I mean, it has to really unpack um, that one as much. It's like just a sense of, and you already mentioned it in your first one. It's like, I mean, even when we did the, um, we did like a survey for should we, should we open it up? Should we stay or should we go? And it was 49%, 51%. I mean, That's crazy. I mean, so in, in, the, in your responses, mm -hmm were legitimately polarized, which yeah. is fair. We asked, yeah. right? So I'm thankful for your honesty. But it's like, but there we heard things like, if you open your building, you are heartless to, why haven't you opened your building yet? You're heartless, you know what I'm saying? And so, and that's honesty, and that uh, that honesty helped us go, it saw just the, the, the sensitivity that this needs, you know, like the, the wisdom that this needs, and so, we, there are so many places for us to be divided. Like, division is so natural that unity has mm -hmm. to be fought for, you know? So, and I, and, I think, and I think communication, I think conversations, connections, mm -hmm. hmm, those are all C's. Mm -hmm. That's a sermon series, mark it down. <laughs> I think those things breed unity. Mm -hmm. And this is a tough environment to do that, right? Like, so, so without those things, division sort of sets in and man the enemy loves division because the enemy can use division to break down missions and visions the next thing you know we're divided in a way that we're kind of all running doing our own thing so mm -hmm. so those are just like for, personally and i think it would be it would have been a cool discipline if you guys could jot it down maybe we'll figure out a way to give your three words and maybe mm -hmm. that'll be a, a series that we'll do i don't know but going into 2021 the heart those are those are six words that I hope you resonate with. It's like, wow, I would love for my church to be known by those six things. Mm -hmm. So, as we go into twenty twenty one, I would say uh, uh, before we talk really briefly to kind of like kind of like, kind of drive by what we hope to launch the, in, in the new year, mm -hmm. I'd say for starters, like you hopefully will see your staff and your church like fully embracing this like distance thing and, and hear me say i'm comfortable saying that not because we are avoiding going back but because mm -hmm. we're not going to wait to connect with you we're not going to hold cross our fingers for that moment mm -hmm. when connection's really easy so we're going into 21 going to 2021 going like yo this is what we got and we're going to we're going to hit our face in prayers we're going to mm -hmm. collaborate and be creative and figure out ways to love our church in hopes that when we go back to our building, when we need musicians and sound techs and, and children's volunteers and ushers and greeters, and we need to say, hey, can you help us pull this off again? That you're, you don't see that your value to us is in what you do. You see that your value to us is in us abandoning what we need from you just so we can be where you yeah. need us to be. And that's in your neighborhoods and in your homes. And so here's some ways that we've... That, you know, before you do that... Yep, yep. Um, I want, actually, I had a verse. Okay. And I, are you okay if I read it real quick? Yeah, please do. Okay. It's First Peter 4, 8. It says through 11, but it's only through 10. Okay. Um, Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. And before Dustin goes over some of the new ideas, 
I kind of had a moment today where I needed to take a deep breath and almost allow myself to be ready to like, okay, I can start something new. Mm. Like it has been a year. It has not been my favorite. Mm. I don't know many of you who would say it is your favorite. I'm sure maybe, you know, someday we'll be able to sit and talk and tell each other why it wasn't our favorites. Um, but I, I just really hope that all of us take a moment to breathe in. There can be something new, and it's not exactly how we normally plan it or how we would normally do it or even necessarily how we would want it, but it's what we have, and we can still make a beautiful impact in each other's lives together. And so I, I kind of just prayed for our entire church, for the people that are that have been there for years, for those who mm. maybe will find us through even just ourselves being the church where we're at right now in our homes mm. and in our neighborhoods, but just really praying that we will take a deep breath that says, okay, this was not the hand we necessarily wanted to be dealt. Uh, it's not a hand that we can necessarily fix. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, no amount of car trading is going to make <laughs> this better right now. Um, but it's the hand that we have, and goodness, we're good enough and we can be strong enough together to overcome it together and mm -hmm. to use the hand that we have to be better. I don't really want to say anything else after that. No, you have really good ideas. Whoa, but that's powerful. Thanks. So... And the first thing I read, um, first thing I thought when you read that, is that first line that says, love covers a multitude of sins. And, there, and the other part is like, yo, what do you guys have to do? Do it. Make a difference with it. Mm -hmm. But the first thing I thought is like, for those, for those, and sins, not even in the sense of like the, this, the things we do against God, because yeah. that def definitely is part of that verse. But also, this, the disappointment. I thought of like, the disappointments, mm -hmm. the disconnects, mm -hmm. that love, co love covers, uh, the love, love can Stand in the gap for those disappointments, yeah. those divisions, those disagreements. Those disagreements. Those. I thought you would do this and you didn't. I thought you should do this yeah. and you didn't. I, you did this and I wish you wouldn't have. And it's like when you read that, I was just like, "What man?" It's like, goodness, if we could just like, if everybody could just like, okay, you know yeah. what? Love can fill in those gaps together as we mm -hmm. go into the new year. And then because the interesting thing that it started with, love has to cover that, right? Mm -hmm. And then once love fills in that gap, and then the next part of the verse is. Now take what you can do and now go make a difference in it. Mm -hmm. So it's like both ends. So it's like so it's like almost like saying, even though those things exist, what if we just collectively is just Yeah. And I think now more than ever before, which is probably sad to say, maybe it shows a disconnect <laughs> earlier on, but I think now more than ever, I just know that like you and I just want to love yeah. people really well. And I think it's almost like a new not that I think it's always been a, you know, quote unquote passion, but I think it's just, it hits different now, <laughs> you yeah. know, cause it, cause it's been hard and it's been a lot yeah. and it's been frustrating and it's been sad and it's been lonely and it's been a struggle. But if you're watching this, just know that we like genuinely want to love you well. And mm. so I hope maybe that finds you even if you're watching it in the morning, afternoon, wherever you're at. If you just feel maybe lonely or disconnected or blah or frustrated or sad or just, oh, what is going to happen with the rest of this year and the beginning of the next, I, I hope that you can be encouraged that, that we want to love you well. Hmm. And if you need to reach out in any way, shape, or form, let us know how we can love you well. Let's, let's just have that prayer. And then I, like, I love this. I, I love making the end of this, just sharing these exciting ideas, but that's just a great place to just stop and pray. Okay. So you should do that. Me? Yeah. Oh, okay. You're a better prayer than me by far. No, stop. But, but you just spoke directly to those people that need, mm -hmm. that, are, need that and are there. And I spoke directly to myself. Yeah, I know. Right? Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Yeah, there actually is a <laughs> Can you tell a me you love me back too? So look, yeah, I Can know, right? Me, exactly. Please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she, you're so sending me a text no. right now that says, yeah, I love, love you. love me, you can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hugging myself right now. Uh, so she just, just spoke directly to, I think, our heart for the church. And I mean, just to be the, those six words are all anchored in just that the, 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 those people that call impact their church home would go, this matters because I feel like I matter. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm a part of something that's that's meaningful and that makes a difference mm -hmm. and, and I feel like that I'm noticed. And, that's, and like maybe, you know, isn't it hard to feel forgotten mm -hmm. right yeah. now? 
We can't start over, but we can begin now and make a new ending. Let's, let's pray. Let's. Why don't you pray? Why don't you pray for the right now, right? Mm -hmm. Again, that verse started with loving, and it covers a multitude of sins, mm -hmm. and, then, and then we can start to do these things that make a difference mm -hmm. with how we've been gifted. So maybe the prayer is we have the right now, and let's, mm -hmm. let's start here. Yeah. Generally, Father, just thank you for everyone who's watching this video, and thank you for giving us the opportunity to even speak <laughs> into this video and on this video. And God, I just pray that even through cameras, which I'm sure we're getting really sick of, that even through cameras, we can love one another, we can encourage each other, we can help to write a new ending. 2020 was not our favorite, it was definitely not mine, but we can definitely help to bring in 2021 in a beautiful and loving and powerful and encouraging and just really amazing way and i i just pray that you would almost cause each of our spirits yeah. ours mine and dustin's first and foremost our the the staff the volunteers everyone yeah. watching this just cause a little start of a stirring in our yeah. hearts to know that love matters so much more than disagreements and yeah. division and frustrations and sadness that hope is still here yeah. and it's not canceled that your peace can be can can we we can not only know your peace but god we can help bring your peace to each other we can be there for one another we can build up one another god you know dust and i even had a conversation today last week i was so freaking out and so stressed out and he was great and today he kind of had a moment where we needed to talk <laughs> and we even goofed god that like oh good i'm good for you now and lord <laughs> let let us be that as a church body, yes. when one of us is down, let the other ones who feel strong pick them up. And then the week after, when those people that are strong feel down, yeah. let the people coming behind pick each other up. And That's God, I true. pray that our hearts would just be hearts that want to love each other. And through our love for each other, God, we would show you how much we love you because we're loving your people and we're yeah. loving the people that you've called and we're loving the people that you died for. And we're loving each other well to show everyone around us that you are amazing. You are our Heavenly Father. You have a plan. You can give us hope. You can give us peace. And Lord, you can really make us as a church body do some amazing things. Not for not for a like or not for popularity for ourselves, but God to just show people who are hurting and feel hopeless and feel lonely that you can be their light and their hope, God. I pray that you would use us, and I pray that you would just allow our hearts to be so ready to be used by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Girl, you preached. <laughs> so here's hopefully some things. Um, I mentioned I started off that these are things that the staff is doing. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've, so we, the staff is committed to, if no one else was a part of this, mm -hmm. that we will do these things to create community in hopes that maybe you'd be like that's kind of cool i want to do that too you know so there are things that we but i hope you don't talk like that <laughs> that's pretty cool too. <laughs> um so if you if you want to be a part of these these are some things that the staff is doing so for one we're doing this thing called drive by drop off all right so um it's actually this is inspired by her weird friends actually um, yeah, they're weird, guys. They're weird because they are so nice. It's, like, annoying, okay? <laughs> but, like, if, if they are constantly bringing gifts to one another. I mean, like, I think they you make... drop them off on the front porch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, so so the whole drive-by drop-off thing, for them, they're, for Jess's friends, it's like whenever something bad would happen, like, you know, when Jess had her surgery, when Maddie got hurt, or maybe it just, just could have been a bad day, or a big presentation that Jess would give. Like, things just stack up on the front porch by, by our friends. And we do the same. Like, Jess would be like, hey, I want you to come with me. We're going to go buy uh, go buy this bottle of wine for so-and-so. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get this car or whatever else. And so, Jess's friends kind of inspired this idea of every time Jess would go to the front door, it would be like, like, it would hurt. Christmas morning! I know, exactly. <laughs> when Maddie got hurt, some of our friends, Heather and Ray K, like, it was like, but here's the thing. The, Heather and Ray K kind of inspired this because... Typically, your your friends do these like big baskets, you know. That I think I think they mortgage their house for it sometimes. <laughs> I know, you know I, mean? I know. But Heather and Ray K brought dropped off a this from when Maddie got hurt. It was the best thing ever. Yeah, it was. If a, you know Maddie, her favorite two things are lemonade 
and french fries. And it was a bag of frozen Arby's curly fries from the grocery store and, and a, a thing, thing of, of limited. And honestly, so it, and was, it was even Maddie's favorite brand. It was four dollars, right? But that, that was for me the moment I was like, all right, there's something about saying to somebody, I see you. And so. And I know you. Yeah, yeah. So our staff is committed that all of us, one time, each one, once a week, so that's our leadership staff. So that's at least six, seven, eight times a week, we're going to just randomly drop something off at somebody's house. So we had this little card that we made, and we're going to print it off, and we're going to write in it. And then on the back of that card will be if, saying to you, hey, if you want to do this, by all means, go do it. And so when our staff does it, we're, let's, let's just say that I dropped it off on, well, just, I already mentioned this, so at, at Heather and Ray Kay's house, right? So if we did, if, so if I took that to their house, I would just snap a picture on the front door and then our impact's going to post it, not my name, but just say, hey, you've been um, drive-by, drop-off, drop off, <laughs> and, and it's just a reminder that we love you. So, so we'll leave a handwritten card, but it's just going to be this anonymous reminder that we, are, that we want to get to where you are. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully, hopefully, you would do the same. And so if you do, you can shoot it, text it to me or Karen, or find a way to get it to one of us. We'll figure that out later. Mm -hmm. Again, this is organic and grassroots. Mm -hmm. But I hope the, in, the impact social media is blown up with people just interacting and just connecting mm -hmm. with people. What I'm asking for you, in addition to just graciously receive the things at, at your front door, is maybe be a part of it and, and mm -hmm. likewise do it. But even more importantly, if you know of somebody mm -hmm. that that would really just benefit from being reminded that we care, mm -hmm. shoot, shoot us a text, shoot us an email, like reach out to one of the staff and say, hey, so-and-so, it'd mean a lot if they could just know that you were thinking about them. Mm -hmm. So we've actually got a list going as leadership staff of people that that we that we it's very important that we just want to remind them that we see them. They maybe maybe it's going, they're going through some hard things and we just want to make sure that we see them. So drive by drop off is this thing that's gonna get our staff into your neighborhood just dropping things off, special gifts and notes and cards. And if you want to be part of that, we'd love for the social media just to blow up of our community loving on each other. That's one thing. So that's what we do for each other. The other thing, one of the things that we're gonna do that's outside of the walls of the church, because I think that's been sort of me and Jess's natural wiring has been in the last couple of years, like, you know, the storytellers thing. And that's all about taking the love of who Christ is outside of the walls of the church. And so I think, I think there's going to be, always be this bend that we'll have is how are we reflecting the love of Christ outside of the walls of the church? And so one of the things that we came up with was just an idea called Love Sack, right? So obviously Love Sacramento. It actually, I actually got the idea with the B-52 song, Love Shack. <laughs> and so it came on, and so I've created this uh, this like 20 second intro video. In fact, uh, Joe, I'm just gonna pause, put that video right here, go. So that is, that's going to be the, an intro video and what each person from our staff is going to do. So once a week, so let's say it's my turn this week or it's Jess's turn or it's Deb G's turn or whatever. So if it's my turn that week, I'm going to wake up on Monday morning and I'm going to go, God, give me a chance to reflect your love to someone that's mm -hmm. not in our church. And it might be a homeless person. It might be just randomly doing an act of kindness when you just, it could be anything. I don't want someone Starbucks that's behind you, yeah, you know? Totally. Yeah. And we don't, what we don't want to do is like, we, we, we see this uh, less fortunate person and we selfie them like, Hey, look what I'll do for you. It's not about that at all. Here's what it's about. So if I had the chance to love on somebody, maybe, maybe I bought, I saw somebody and we walked them into McDonald's and we bought them lunch. Maybe just for example, what I don't want us to do is to exploit them, but what I do want us to do is to capture a 15, 20, 30 second video. And first it'll, so what, here's what's, what you're gonna see a lot of. You're gonna see that 20 second love sack bumper video, followed by maybe me on a camera phone telling the story that says, I just had the chance to buy coffee or lunch for this guy at McDonald's and it made his day. His name was, name was Bob and got to hear his story Maybe I even prayed for him. And then it'll end with, I want to make sure that I'm constantly reflecting the love of Christ outside of the walls of church. So it's this idea of like, we can do this. Like mm -hmm. the smallest little things we, like our church impact, can collectively do these yeah. really cool things outside of the walls of church. 
And so our staff's going to do that without your help. We're going to do it. We're just committed to doing it. And maybe, maybe you do the same. And if you yeah. do, take that 15, 20 second video of you just talking to you. Maybe it's with your family. Maybe you get your whole family involved. And afterwards, you shoot a video with your whole family and you just say, have the coolest opportunity to do this. Shoot it to us. Let us put it together with that bumper video and share it with our church that Impact cares about those that aren't at our church. Wouldn't it be amazing if Impact's impacts facebook page was like the page everyone goes to to get like encouraged yeah i know right because there's so many like oh you got yeah. drive by drop off oh love yeah love sack. like <laughs> you know yeah jess is always watching she's look. the humans of new york is like oh, one of your favorite things I cry ever. every time yeah. yeah what if people are going to impact like oh that was so cute oh that was so oh, oh that makes me you know yeah. goodness yeah. gracious we need a little more of that yeah yeah so so drive by drop off is about us and it, but it doesn't have to just be for our church it can be for your neighbor you can yeah. be for anybody but ultimately that's our our hope to get into our neighborhoods of one another and it's recognizing that hey you know what someone might not want you knocking on the door and giving them a big hug and sneezing <laughs> yeah. all over them yeah but what they might love is to see a note and their favorite bottle of wine or their favorite snack or their a bag of fries from mcdonald's if you're madison <laughs> and it's just reminding <laughs> and them lemonade. yeah right and it's reminding them that you see them you love them the love sacramento is you doing something that reflects the heart of christ outside of the walls share it with the church as an inspiration that we all can make a difference. So those are the two things, um, two of the things. There are some other ideas that we're working on. Those are the two things that you'll see regularly that you're invited to be a part of if you want. And then, this is kind of fun. This is kind of fun. I want to call it this. Isn't the official title yet because Jess is unsure about it. No, I said it. Oh, you did? Remember I added that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I wanted to create environments for us to hang out together as family at home, since that's what we had to do. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to just call this Netflix and chill. And then I said, we're old. We have to remember what that actually means. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so I said, why don't you call it Netflix and actually, actually chill? <laughs> and so, so I created this graphic that's Netflix and actually chill. Here's what it's all. It's, it's freaking simple, but it could be kind of fun, right? So when you see the graphic for Netflix and Actually Chill post on social media, on Facebook or on Instagram, here's what all that it is. All that it is is you tag somebody. So well, let's just say that I see it and I tag, I tag Jess. No, I'll probably wouldn't do that because that'd be cheating. Same family. Yeah. yeah. So I would tag Jim Altman. I tag Jim Altman. And, <laughs> and so, Tracy. And Tracy Altman. Yeah. <laughs> and so then they could tag somebody you could tag 12 people you could tag and so what we want to do, all you're doing is just their name and so every single week we're going to go through and put the names on that post mm -hmm. from instagram and from social media into one bucket and we're just going to pull a name out and then that person will get a 50 dollars gift card to the restaurant of their choice each week as an invitation for them to grab some dinner take out to, yeah to grab some takeout and just spend the night with your wife and your kids just, just or yourself. <laughs> Those yeah. are kind of nice too. Whoever you're quarantining with. Yeah, and then know? just enjoy a dinner on us. We can't be there together, but we can mm -hmm. foster you, the chance for you to spend that time with your family. And just, I mean, honestly, just, and even when you take the bite, when you, when you open the bag, what I hope it reflects is like, our church cares, you know, like mm -hmm. they are, you know, I, I, we just, that we could be a small part of being, mm -hmm. since you can't come to 8299 East Stockton, since you can't come to our house as a church, we're going to look for ways to be in your house. And so, mm -hmm. so you'll see door drop off. What did I keep, I keep saying door dash, but it's drive by drop off. You'll we're see gonna that. Get it. We're going to get, get it. it. You'll see a love set. Invite you to be part of those. And then you're going to see Netflix and actually chill. And then when you see that, just start, let's just start blowing it up with, Love, like just randomly, uh, what's it called when you when you nominate? Randomly mm -hmm. nominate people. It can be a thousand names on there if you want, but only one entry per person, please. Mm -hmm. Cheaters. And because all of these are going to be on social media, it's a great reminder that let's actually start engaging that more. Yes. Yeah. Let's, let's yeah. really be on social media and do it in encouraging ways. Yeah. I would love it if our church's social media became the Elk Grove and then moved into the Sacramento and moved into the Northern California's favorite place to go for encouragement yep. and for some hope and for even just some fun and lightheartedness. Yep. The day after um, Mike, um, the day after Mike mentioned to me that he wanted to, to take the time that he needed and, mm -hmm. and, and for me to sort of to step into his role, um, the next day I began to pray and the two words that I've never not been able to escape and I know that they're the two words that God is inviting us to take into 2021 mm -hmm. is community and engagement. And so the community aspect is, I believe, what the that whole like 
Love Sacramento and Love Sac and Drive By Drop Off. Um, that's about creating community. And then I think the engagement word is about creating the space online where you will check back in and be a part and be connected. Um, I've already said multiple times, will you please check our Facebook and our, especially our Facebook, our Facebook and Instagram, um, so you can just see what's going on, see what's canceled, see what's what's promoting, see what's actually happening, see what's not. But what's happening, what's not, is not nearly as stinking important as us being there for each other. And so we're gonna. We're not going to back burner opening up. We're going to continue to forge forward to get this building opened up and to have services. I long for that. I want that. But we're not going to we're not going to put community on hold until we can get back into our building. We're going to find creative ways to create community. And maybe you got one. If you do, you tell us. Like there's nothing inherently uh, spiritual about these ideas. They're just ideas to try to get to you where your address is because you're not coming to our house. And so we want to figure out how to get. To yours, so. We want you to stay safe yeah. and healthy and be as cautious as you need to be. And while yeah. doing that, love on each other well, encourage each other well, and hopefully you will know just how important you really are to our community and truthfully to us. Yeah. Love you guys. Thank you for being on this wild adventure with us. It's going to be a fun year. Yes. 2021. It's got to be better. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one.